Welcome to the Berlin Drawing Room. So we start. So, and then hi to everybody that wrote in the chat. We have Canada, Switzerland, Pittsburgh, Thailand. Uh, very nice. So I'm gonna put in the chat the the link to the um, uh, to the email reference image we're gonna use today, and I'm also gonna put the reference image itself as a download because different laptops have different problems with with the images. So we're gonna try to do it like this, and everybody should be able to access it. As you will be able to see, it's a pretty standard Berlin landmark. It's the Berlin Brandenburg Tor, the door of Brandenburg. And this is like not a especially fancy picture, but it's a picture that can be a good starting point for a sketch. And this is often what we need. We just need a good starting point for a sketch. And being a geometric shape, it will also give you the chance to address a couple of tricks you can use to navigate this kind of, of images. So what we're going to do today, um, so the technique we're going to work with today is line and wash. For the line part, I would suggest you to grab uh, one or two uh, different uh, pigment liners. Um, so, like, for example, a thinner one that could be at 0, 2, or at 0, 3. I'm thinking getting at 0, 2. And then a thicker one that could be at 0, 5, or 0, 7. There needs to be a couple of numbers of distance between them. So, it will be like easier to have contrast. So, we, we have two pigment liners. And the first one, the thin one, uh, the important thing with the pigment liners is that they need to be water resistant. You, any kind of black pen you're using, if you don't know if it's water resistant, try it on, on the same paper you're using, put some water over it and check that it doesn't melt because it happened a couple of times that a student started working with a pen and then at the end, see, so don't do that with your face. <laughs> and then at the end we discovered it wasn't water resistant and you know it can be said after you spend all the time trying to do the drawing and everything so uh check it before we start drawing and so you will need these two pants one or two pants you can also use one and then go double with one and then water colors and and brush and you should be set so what we're going to do, the first step of our process, um, uh, the first step for, of our process, it's going to be using the thinner pen and, uh, and start with the sketchy part, like finding the picture, finding how to draw the picture. The important thing is you will see that we will start drawing without using the pencil first, without using an eraser. It's because the technique that I want to share with you, uh, the point is to try to be loose on paper and try to incorporate the searching line, the errors, the sketching line in the overall style of the image. So if we start with a very thin pen, that will allow us to you know to leave all these lines on the paper and they will just create texture they will not become be mistakes and that's you know it's a nice thing so the first thing we're gonna do is trying to like figure out how to manage the you know the volume and the perspective of this thing susan if you have a question just write it in the chat while i'm while i'm teaching and i'll see it there and address it um, I, I'm I'm sorry. I don't know where to type on here, but I'm I'm just wondering how do I scroll back in the chat to get the image that we're using? Uh, you should have been online when I posted because it was after we talked. Uh, okay, I guess I'm gonna send the link again, and I'll just sorry send... about that. No, no, it's okay. Uh, I'll just send it again. Um, 
this is the link to the Dropbox and then I'm gonna post again the image file so either way either you open the link or you open the file you should be able to see it okay everybody okay if you have uh, more uh, like these are the two ways you can access the image either way you should be able either to see the link or to see the image itself in the chat um if you're struggling to look at the chat and look hey, at the... you know what i don't have the image but i'm just gonna follow you <laughs> I was saying, if you struggle to open the chat and follow the video, if you have a second device, like a phone or iPad and your laptop, like if you have a second device, you can join twice in the meeting uh, and then look in the chat from the second device. But yes, you can just also just follow step by step what I'm doing and it's and it's going to be. Wait, no, I have a solution. One <laughs> second. You need, you need to give me one second, though. Um, I, I can set up the, the reference in my screen, but let's hope that it can that it doesn't start lagging. If it starts lagging because it's too much for it, I can stop. But uh, let's see. I should be able to do this. Okay. Oh, it's rotated. Why it's rotated? Uh, okay. Here, can you see it? Okay. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. You will not see me mixing my watercolors, but you know, at least you can see the image. 50 50. <laughs> you know? priorities so we were saying we're gonna start with sketching lines so the first thing that i'm gonna do uh, it's like this is not even a perspective it's almost uh an axonometry like it's uh just a three-dimensional please everybody don't mute yourselves because there is a lot of people and if you're not muted there's gonna be a lot of background noise while i'm talking so and i can't really go around to look for who is not muted so please remember to mute yourselves there is still somebody that is not muted ah, Mara seems to be still okay one second okay let's hope oh yeah i'll, I'll go look for it Okay, wait. Okay, we should have everything you need to know. Okay, we can start. We can manage people. There's many, a lot of us. So, so let's start. We start finding the the first vertical line. So the lower one on the edge. As you can see, I'm not doing one precise line. I'm doing very many sketchy light line, kind of like this is. Uh, a pencil. Then the next thing that it's important is start doing the horizontal lines. So the bottom line, it's not horizontal, it's slightly downwards. So I'm gonna pull a long slightly downward line. And then the upward line again, it's not parallel to the edge of the paper, it's slightly upwards. So I'm just gonna do a slightly upward line and then i'm just gonna double this because of the different like edges of the monument and then i'm gonna pull another vertical line and this is important like this line and this line here they need to be parallel to the edge of the paper okay this one is slightly it's not parallel inclinated downwards this one is not parallel inclinated upwards this one perfectly parallel this one perfectly parallel once you have these lines the main setup of the whole thing it's already done so the then you can add a little bit of lines for this on the side and this one on the side at the side of the gate 
then we're gonna start uh, looking at like the smaller details. So the gate has six um, edges. So we just need to find, at first we need to find the alpha. And one thing that it's important to look at, if you look at this thing, like we have the central part with the chariot, you can see that the central edge frame uh with the best relief it's not exactly in the middle because there is some perspective it is slightly more to the left so the space this space from here to the beginning of the thing and this space from here to the end of the thing this is bigger than this okay it doesn't have to be precise but it's important to keep this in mind because also the columns they are not at the same distance with each other so we have this part here we're going to get to the chariot later we have this section here we have this section here and now we need to place our columns so to place the columns the first thing we want to do is place the first one like this and then the last one here okay and then we want to place the two that are under the frame here of the chariot. So from here, I'm going to place one here. And then I'm going to place the second one, the other one here. Again, I'm not trying to draw with details. The important thing is that the line of the columns are all vertical, perfectly parallel to the edge of your place of your page. Don't do them crooked, okay? These lines are the crooked ones. These vertical lines are all like, you know, parallel to the edge of your page. Once you have placed the two columns here under the center, we just place the third column one halfway here and the other one halfway here. Okay, and maybe we can do this a little bit. We can shorten it and do it a little bit shorter, like this. Good enough. Like this. Again, we are not doing details, we're doing very light, sketchy lines still. Okay, and it doesn't matter if the proportions are not perfect, like. As I always say, especially during the summer travel sketching classes, when we are doing these things from life, it's a sketch. It's just a sketch. We don't. If, the principle is, when you do urban sketching, you don't want it to be a perfect mechanical representation of the thing you have in front of you, because we have iPhones for that. We have the smartphone for that. You can take a picture if you want a perfect representation. If we are drawing something, we draw something because we want to spend time with that thing and we want to like spend some time looking at that subject and put on paper our emotional impression of the time that we spent with that subject. So nothing in this includes doing a perfect drawing because mine is not perfect it's not an architectural study the proportions are not perfect it doesn't matter i'm i'm going for the vibe i'm not going from for the details this being said here we have to mark the the underside of the roof so i can mark it like this and then i have to do the you know the walls be between the different uh, columns and as you can see it it moves so here on this side it's like this there is no sky i can't see any sky and then i get here and i will have my wall here the down the downward we do it later and then we have an opening and then here it becomes this line here is like this the more we come to the right the more the line from this becomes vertical so here it's more steep so this distance is shorter than this distance and here it becomes even steeper 
okay and again see how light my lines are it looks kind of almost like pencil and then the same thing i do downwards so here it will have no sky and here it will then open to the to the background and here it will become more vertical like this and then here in the back and i can start from this point i have the street in the back it's a park actually and this needs to be more horizontal this is not horizontal at all yes like this And then we have the diagonal line of the trees here. And then more trees here because there is the tear garden behind. So I'm going to pause five minutes so you can do this and then we're going to do the chariot and the people and the other details. And in the meantime, I'm going to reorganize your window so I have all the people that I have a meeting with your speech. Okay. Good.
this is a free session don't worry you can stay here and enjoy the class it's it's cool it's a free class we do them every once in a while it, it's okay it's cool just enjoy don't worry Okay, so now let's look, let's work on the, on the chariot and on the people in the front. Before doing that, I'm just gonna also do the, um, quickly do the sidewalk here. There is this like piece of sidewalk you can, you can do just slightly. So the important thing now to do the, um, to do the people and, and uh, the other, there is a lot of people around. So uh, you can test this on like on a side piece of paper if you want. So when we want to do figures in like in, um, in a sketch and they are very small, like, you know, the people here around are small, the, char the horses on the chariot here are small. I'm not going to try to draw them with any sort of detail. Like, I'm not going to try to to actually draw the thing. What we do is like, it's this kind of squiggles uh, that represent the thing. So to do the squiggles, uh, let's start with the people because it's the easier one. Like, there is a person walking. So I want to do a squiggle of a person walking. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start and never lifting my pencil off it's like i'm gonna try to fill in the space that that the shape of that person conveys i'm gonna do it this is the the size that we're gonna do in this sketch i'm gonna do it bigger so you can see what i'm doing with the pencil okay with the pen so i'm gonna do just squiggles filling in with like random sketchy lines the area then the shape that that person has see like this is the zoomed in version of this but when you do it this small it looks cool like it looks right okay so what we want to do is this kind of squiggles so let's start with our squiggles uh so we're gonna do another thing that it's important to keep in mind when you do people in this kind of setup, this is like a, a trick that it's important to keep in mind. When you're drawing people, the heads of the people, they all need to be at the same high, on the same line. I, I'll show you what I mean. This is, this is an, like one of those urban sketching secrets that people always forget about. Like this person here walking is like closer to the gate so it's smaller okay it's this size this person here that is skating is closer to the viewpoint so they are taller so here i will draw like the head will be on the same line but the figure will end up like taller but the head is on the same line okay and then for extreme this person here on the like on the edge which is even more further back than this one because this person is like is very close to the door again i'm gonna do the head at the same high and then the figure smaller 
So the head is on the same line. If you like, if you want, you can do like I did. You can just put a pen as a reference and then do all the heads under that pen. But then the height of the figure changes depending how close or how far away they are from the thing. And the same thing here in between this door, there are people that are even further back. So they're even smaller. Again, the head, it's all on the same line. Okay, this is important for, for when you're drawing crowds or when you're drawing uh, people like in, in this kind of context. So I'm going to draw, I don't have to draw all the people that are in this, in this thing. Like I can draw some people, like, you know, th there are some humans going around, so I can draw some of them just, you know, to get the idea that there are humans. And then maybe some smaller ones here. And then maybe some tiny ones here. Like this. One here. Even tinier back here. Yeah like enough people to to feel like there is people around there is a reason why there aren't any more details on this drawing it's because we're gonna do them later okay so don't 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 worry about that we're, we're gonna get there and then the other squiggles that i'm gonna do it's here the um, the chariot and one thing i suggest try to place the this like the spear first because it's the higher spot, so you can place the spear and then you can then place the squiggles of the horses. And again, nobody's trying to draw a horse here. I'm, I'm literally just drawing squiggles. The, there is no detail that represents or remembers even vaguely what a horse is. Okay. Maybe this one on the side, it's the more shaped squiggle the horse shaped squiggle I'm doing but that, that's it that's that's the level of detail we're going for no more than this so I'm gonna give you five minutes to do this and then we're gonna start coloring
Okay, so let's get to the first step of color and then we're going to use the pen again. So as you can see, no, you can't see it because there is an image. My palette is pretty dirty. This is because uh, I like dirty colors and usually when I color, my colors are always quite muted. And my cat woke up, so I'm going to have a tail behind my back soon because she likes to jump on my chair. So let's start with the colors. Here, this bonus cat tail. Um, we're going to start with the sky. And for the sky, um, I, here too, like the, the reference image has certain colors, uh, but we're not going to um, try to match the colors exactly. We're just going to use the colors as reference and these like long shadows, which are quite nice as reference. So as you can see in the background, there is like the sun is pretty bright. Uh, so what we're going to try to do is to leave white on the page uh where the light is and then we're gonna put some blue for the sky and some gray for the clouds so we're gonna start with the sky and you can do that if you have cerulean blue in your palette you can do that if you don't you can let's see where i can okay i think i need i i have to clean at least one side of this palette to do this uh Hmm. Wait, I'm gonna mix the colors. I'm gonna mix the colors here so you can see the color mixing because if I do it there, if I do it here, it's under the reference picture. So if you don't have the cerulean blue, you can have a decent sky color by mixing a little bit of ultramarine and a little bit of Prussian blue. So you basically mix the two blues you have in your palette and that will give you a decent sky color. The other thing is please always test your colors on a different piece of paper before putting them on your uh, sketch. So I'm going to start and I'm going to do the, the sky in between the clouds. Yes, cat. I, I see that you woke up and, and you want to be petted, but I am currently a little bit busy, so I, I can't give you pets now. You will have to be patient until I finish. Like this. Okay. If you get areas where you have big water drops, when you're doing clouds, you can actually take a piece of paper and just tap those big water blobs out and that will, you know, will fall into the line. Uh, do it whatever color you want. I have cobalt blue, you can mix that with Prussian, yes. Thank you, my, my cat name is Pepper and she is, oh, come on, come here, introduce yourself. Cat name is Pepper, she's black, I dress in black and my my uh, like shelves are black so she doesn't stand out much. But she's a rescue cat and she has PTSD and she's sometimes very cuddly, sometimes very scary, scared and it's it's a thing. So I don't know if now she wants to sit here or she want what she wants to do. Usually she wants attention, which is something I can give her while i'm teaching so she will have to have please um so yeah to to who, who say that the sky looks gray not blue do it whatever color you want we're not trying to do exactly the same colors 
uh, we're doing the blue of the sky of the, the I did a little bit of blue in the areas of the sky that you can see in between all that gray, that gray part that you see, those are the clouds, which I'm going to do now. Thank you for the cat. Compliments, Pepper, they think you're cute. Are you happy? You're not happy because I'm not giving enough attention, I know, but you know, you have to be patient. Um, I'm gonna do a light gray now, like this, maybe lighter. If you want to make the color lighter in watercolor, remember, just add more water like this. And so with this light gray, uh, I'm gonna do the clouds. And the important thing when you do the clouds is to leave the white edge because there is this sort of backlight thing going on. So I want to to get the the black light, the backlight, sorry. And as you can see, I'm not being precise. I'm not trying to color in between the contours with any precision because it's just a sketch and also the the style doesn't require to to be precise in any way here as we get close to the to the area where more light where there is more light like here i can still go a little bit with the paper along the edge to let it down and make a lighter transition when you're doing clouds, I, I think that the petting, patting down, thing, petting is for the cat, the patting down the paper um, to get those soft edges, it's the best technique for, for clouds. So pat, pat and pat your clouds like this. So you can get the excess water out and see it's a little bit darker than it looks in the picture but it's okay it's you know part of the aesthetic uh the class is being recorded and i'm not the person that takes care of putting it uh online but at one point it would be online somebody of the berlin drawing room will put it online uh i think on youtube so you you can you will find it there and you can follow it again there are you doing make oh, okay if you don't have gray you can get <coughs> a gray color mixing ultramarine blue and burnt amber. So the the purplish blue and the dark cold brown that you have in your palette. If you mix those two colors, you can get a sort of a, a gray neutral tone. Put a lot of water so it doesn't become too dark. Okay. I'll give you five minutes just to do this. And I'm going to talk in the meantime while you finish doing this. The other thing that it's important when we do this kind of technique. Uh, thank you, Alessandra. Bye. You can catch up the recording. Um, when you use this kind of technique, uh, the important thing to keep in mind when you're coloring is that you don't have to color everything. Like you don't have to color all the details and all the tonal levels of every color you just want to put like one layer of color everywhere to give an idea of what color those things are okay so it, it doesn't have to be many shades like many layers of watercolor one over the other we're trying to do like an essential efficient sketch the idea is this is a technique you can use while you're around traveling and you just want to quickly sketch what you're seeing in front of you. So you don't want to be there doing like four layers of watercolor and like having to wait until it dries between each other. We're just doing like drops of color for each element. Uh, 
Ah, ouch, cat, but not with your piece, not with the with your nails in my legs. You want to sit beside me here? Come here. Oh, I'll give you some of the chair. You can do that. Come here. Hmm? No? Okay, so when you're done with the with the sky, it's better to use hot press or cold press. It really depends on what you prefer. I prefer cold press and rough paper, like paper with a texture, uh, because I do, like in my sketching technique, I do a lot of dragged brush strokes, so horizontal brush dragging horizontal on the paper, so you can use the texture of the paper. So I personally prefer cold press, rough torsion, or very rough paper. Uh, but for some people, uh, doing going with the pigment liner over rough paper is more uh, uncomfortable, uh, and they prefer the hot press smooth paper, so their lines can be cleaner. I think it, it's really a personal preference, also of aesthetic and style and way you hold pens and you trace lines. I, I suggest experimenting with both and seeing the one that you prefer. You recommend using watercolor brush pens when we are outside? Oh, yes. Like, not watercolor brush pens. I usually, when I'm on location, I usually use this, water brushes. So I have my watercolor box, and then I have, these are like brushes, and there is water in the handle, and you use them as normal brushes, and I think it's the best uh, tool to use watercolors on location. Come on. Pepper, sit down, find the piece. You were sleeping, it was so good. Now you're not sleeping anymore. What are we gonna do? Hmm? <sighs> you can sit down, that's okay. So, uh... <laughs> I, I wanted to do the 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 yellow light on on the ground, but I just looked at my yellow and it's super dirty. So let me just quickly clean my yellow. Go there. Okay. And then okay. So again, I'm gonna mix the colors here. So. Next color that I'm gonna do, we have this like very warm yellow. I'm gonna mix a little bit of orange in it to make it warmer. And again, always remember, test it on a little bit of side paper so you're sure it's the right color. And with this one, the first thing that I want to do is this sharp like lines of light because I think it's like one of the the cool things about this uh, this image, so this the the cuts of light coming from between the columns here, and then don't worry if they're not super precise because we're gonna go with the with the dark color too. Anyway, I'm talking it. So. Which yellow is that again? I'm sorry. I just use, I have a, this is just a primary yellow. Uh, depending on the light yellow you're using, if it's not warm enough, I suggest you mix it with uh, a little bit of uh, orange. So it's more warm. And then I will put this like here in between. And then the same yellow, you can put it a little bit on the edge of the, in the sky on the edge of the clouds and again you can tap it to make it softer but you can put it a little bit be careful not to put it over the blue because it will make yellow uh green stains so just a little bit here 
just to put a little bit of yellow in the sky, but it's not that relevant. It's more important to have it down here. And then another thing that it's important to keep in mind when we're working on location, when we're mixing colors, is to, to mix, like to try to mix color over each other. So I have the leftover yellow from this layer. I'm going to use it for the, like the darker, uh, this darker orangey brown color. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit of oh, right. gonna mix a little bit of orange in it, and then a little bit of ochre to make this kind of orangey brown color. So something like this again, very very light. It doesn't have to be too dark. not too bright, so something like this. And I'm gonna put this on these parts, like where, we, where the color of the structure is made lighter and warmer by the, by the light. <clears throat> and again, over this orange, I'm going to mix even more ochre to make it more, uh, more muted. And I'm going to use that for the, for the rest of the structure. And if your ochre color doesn't become muted enough, you can put the tiniest bit of blue in it tiniest because if not it becomes it can become um very green very soon and so and i'm gonna go then here on the structure with this more like brownish warm brownish color but again as you can see i'm not trying to be especially precise i'm not coloring inside the lines and just like placing the the p the color in the area where that color is And I'm gonna use this even here a little bit on the side wall. So see, we're using always just one base color everywhere.
give you I'll give you a couple of minutes to do this. Okay, now we're gonna do, we still have the gray from before, from the sky. We can make it a tiny bit dark, we should still have the gray from before. Uh, we can make it a tiny bit darker. Just a tiny bit. And we can use that here on the, on the ground. Like this, so there is a little bit of contrast. And then we can do also the long shadow of the people. Like of this person. We have only this lot. Now we also have some shadows here. Like this. And we can use this also the couple of darker areas here. And then the last color we need is the green the gray green for the the trees behind it's like it almost actually look almost looks like brown so 
we just have to do a very muted green here. Like this, you can take the excess of drying the brush and tapping it. And if you want, you can also then put a little bit of uh, lighter green here on the on the horses on the chariot up there. But this is like all the color we need before going again with the thicker pen. I'm gonna give you five minutes. Can you recommend a basic watercolor set for the sketch class in July? Am I using watercolor pencil? Not so good for this technique. The cheaper, like the best uh, price for for ratio thing you can find is the Cot Winsor and Newton Cotman uh, twelve pence box. It's the the cheaper best quality on the market um and the box will come with a white uh godet you just have to buy on the side paints gray instead of that white because we, you don't use white in watercolor are you talking about the windsor noodle uh windsor newton um pans of paint i'm gonna uh, put a link in the let me give a second uh by Seda, yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna just find it online and put a link for you.
Okay, give me one second. I'll find you the link. This one. It's currently also like on, on sale on Amazon. Uh, but yeah, this set here, classic, which is um, 12, sorry for the awful link. Um, and you just have then to buy the paints gray on the side, basically, and, and substitute the white with the paints gray. If you are uh, if you are in a country like this set that I have is the um, St. Petersburg White Knights. These are like uh, Russian honey based watercolor. These are super cheap, but I actually I'm currently not sure if anybody's importing them anymore. I just realized. So I don't know. Uh, these are also things that I used to do with my students. I'm going to leave you a couple of minutes to finish up the coloring and then we're going to do the second layer. The rough paper is an advantage. Today I used hot press. This is the first time I've ever used it and it's, ah. <laughs> it doesn't have that nice rough absorbency. Uh, actually, like the paper that I'm using is a very like cheap uh, cellulose based watercolor paper. Uh, so it's like it's not fancy paper or highly absorbent paper in any way. This is uh, an Animule uh, watercolor sketchbook. It's a very cheap paper. It's not cotton fancy paper that absorbs more. I'm actually having a difficulty with the paper drying fast enough. You so, can use a hair dryer if where you are doesn't dry fast enough. You can use a hair dryer to dry. I'm not using wave it. Today. it. <laughs> uh, I'm not using it today because it's dry. It's hot here, so it's drying fast enough. Because everybody's going to speak at the end, I just wanted to say thank you. I am staying, but I can't believe how easy it is when, you know, you're copied. <laughs> having having step-by-step -step instruction usually, usually uh, helps. I've wanted to do something like this for years and years and never known how to do it. And um, that's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very happy for that, to hear that. Okay, so uh let's do the the last step with the pen so i can leave you some time to do it yourself and then we can do the final round of check-in 
so the principle of using the darker pen, let me just do a quick sketch here to show you. So we have the color and we have our initial drawing. I'm imagining now our sphere. Just picture that you have a light source on that sphere. What we're going to do on each element of the sketch now is go with the thicker pigment liner only where the shadow is to create a sort of uh, tonal line. OK, so we're going to start doing that from the top. So here I'm going to do this slightly darker again, very loose lines. And like here, I'm going to do darker lines only where the shadow on the statue of the horses are like this. And then here. And then I'm going to do darker lines only where there are darker lines in the frame. So not the edge, but like just under the edge actually and again i'm not gonna i'm gonna keep lines very very loose if you want you can also do like this kind of vertical patterning and again see how, how, how sketchy it is it doesn't have to be precise and then here this line here and then the edge and then the second line here then going around the edge here and then where the columns are here is important that we break this line so it's here and then goes on the side and then goes only on the side on the right side of the column not the left and the same thing here so in the middle and then on the right side of the column and then here if you want, you can also do the some like this decoration. Cat, oh, I know you're getting bored and you want food. Give me one second. I'm almost done. Then here. Are we gonna put? Sorry, are we gonna put watercolor on again afterwards? No, this is okay. the last step. So this is the our last step. We're gonna do the the darkness slash shadow point part. I will say, I don't know if you if you like this this decoration. Yes, I know, I know you want to go out. Give me one second. And then here, and then here. And here you will see will come a little bit smaller like this. And then here on this side, see, I'm not trying to be hyper precise with these things. It's very very sketchy lines and then the same thing here. Like this and then here on the edge of the sidewalk, just the dark side here on the edge, like just the bottom edge here. And then I can do the people, the ones that are closer, actually, I can go over again. These bigger ones, I can do them slightly darker. So that will also help with the feeling that they are closer because we will have two different densities of, of black and color. And that's it. That's our sketch of the Brandenburg Gate. And I'm going to leave you now five minutes to finish these last things up, and then we're going to do a round of final round of checking.
Thank you, everybody who's leaving. Uh, what are the topics that are usually covered during the one week course line and wash and the travel sketching sketching book? So uh, there is the sketchbook practice workshop that starts next week, which is going to be about line and wash, which is this kind of technique. What we're going to do during that online workshop, it's going to be how to apply this technique to a variety of subjects. So not only urban sketching, we're also going to do like portrait or flowers or animals. Like we're going to do many subjects with the same technique. On the one week workshop that I'm doing in person in Berlin, the travel sketching workshop, uh, in that workshop, we're going to go around Berlin and doing urban sketching so sketching from life around the city we're going to use this technique and some other adjacent uh, mixed media techniques so maybe we're going to use also colored pencils maybe we're going to use also uh, uh, water soluble inks like we're going to mix this technique with other techniques i hope this uh, answers your question This week intensive call it, will you do it in the winter maybe? The right now it's planned the at the beginning of July and at the beginning of August. In the winter it's a little bit hard to do because outside it's cold and it's not very pleasant to sit outside and and draw. So usually we we keep it for the for the nice season. Thank you, Hanna. Okay. Okay, so um, I'm going to get my spotlight off. So now whoever is done and wants to share, let's just, let's do like this. Who wants to share their work and, and uh, do the final sharing, please raise your hand so I can organize it that way. Thank you to everybody that is also writing in the chat. Okay, Lisa.